GLOCAL stands for Global Issues in Local Context. And this means that we are doing educational videos. And in these videos, we try to bring in some global issues that are the same everywhere, but from a local point of view, so that we always use the local culture and local people and local foods in these videos to bring the message closer to the mothers. And the aims of this project is to, through these educational videos, educate mothers so that they will better understand how to feed their children and what things are important in child feeding, and by that reduce maternal and child mortality. And through the application that we have in this project, we want to facilitate the work of healthcare workers so that they can more effectively collect data and um, do health checkups with the mothers and their children. We are first going to present our videos. We have a set of 40 videos approximately. And uh, in these videos, we have followed the six steps that have been scientifically proven to be very effective in education. And this is that we always use real people and the videos are very short and there is only one message per video so that it's not confusing to the mothers and they can easily follow and see repeatedly the same message. And most importantly, especially in Kenya in the field, they have told us that the mothers actually do have the information. They know what they are supposed to do, but they lack the knowledge and know-how on how to put this information into action. We can, through video, show multiple mothers at the same time how they can do certain things correctly. And these are the topics. We have four groupings of the topics. We have videos for pregnant mothers, for breastfeeding mothers, for mothers who have small children who are in the complementary feeding age, and then one group of videos on child care. Now we would like to show you a little piece of one of the local videos that we have made. We're not going to show you the whole thing because that would take too long, but this will give you an idea of what the videos are like. Enriching porridge. Complementary foods usually consist of a staple food, like a porridge made of sorghum, millet, maize, or rice. The porridge should be thick enough to feed with a spoon. Too much water in the porridge will fill the baby up before she gets the needed energy and nutrients. Porridge alone is not enough to give your baby all the nutrients she needs. Okay. And we are also going to show you an example of an animation. And this animation is now in Swahili, because one of the main things with these animations and real videos also is that we can translate them easily into any local language, and thus we can show videos within country or in the neighboring countries in different languages and thus also the illiterate mothers will get the message in their own language. Anemia Iron ni muhimu kwa damu yako. Madini ya iron hutumika katika kutengeneza seli nyekundu za damu. Wakati wa ujauzito, utahitaji madini ya iron kwani wewe na mtoto wako mnahitaji damu mpya. Madini haya ya ion yaliyo katika damu hufunga manisha oksijeni unayopumua. Unapopata oksijeni ya kutosha katika mwili wako, unakuwa na nguvu ya kufanya kazi na kufikiria vizuri. Pia, mtoto aliye ndani ya tumbo yako hukua vizuri. Wakati seli nyekundu hazina madini ya ion ya kutosha, oksijeni huwa haifungamani vizuri. Hali hii inajulikana kama anemia na husababisha damu yako kuwa isiyo na nguvu. Mama anayeugua anemia 
huwa mchovu na hana nguvu ya kufanya kazi. Yeye anaweza mpoteza mtoto wake kabla ya kuzaliwa au kuzaa watoto wadogo na wadhaifu. Here you could probably already see that and with these two different kinds of videos we can address two different issues the issue of knowledge with the animations and then like we were speaking about before how to put the knowledge into action with the real videos and we also have an application in this local project and this application has been designed for the healthcare workers we will shortly show you a little bit of how the application works but the point is that through these or with this application the healthcare worker can easily and effectively do a health checkup with the child, collect the information and store it, and also give target specific education because the application automatically finds the relevant videos for that specific mother and thus all mothers don't need to see all of the 40 videos, but if that mother has a specific problem with breastfeeding, that mother can see the breastfeeding videos. The Glocal application links the videos to the healthcare system. When visiting with a family, the nurse can use the application for the health checkup. The application covers vaccinations, a physical exam, health, hygiene, and nutrition. The application offers an electronic vaccination card that keeps track of the child's previous vaccinations as well as dates for future shots. Likewise, the application helps in monitoring the child's growth and makes it easy to follow this with both weight and height graphs. The health, hygiene and nutrition sections consist of checklists. When the nurse has entered all the information for one of these sections, the application will automatically find the relevant videos for viewing. This allows for target-specific education. So now you know a little bit about the project and now we are going to tell you a little bit about what we are doing currently. So now we have the Kenyan or East African video set ready and we are currently going to or actually right now going to start to study the effectiveness of these videos and we are going to do that in Nairobi slum and in the Kenyan countryside and this we are doing together with students and professors from Kenyatta University. And we want to test these videos so that we can see that they actually work, that they have an effect on maternal caps, as they are called, so knowledge, attitudes, and practices. And we are doing this in an 18-month intervention. And after we are done with this, we hope to be expanding the global project globally. And our main target is families in low and middle income countries, not just the mothers, but also the fathers, as research now shows that that is also very important for child health. And the same video set that has been produced in Kenya can be used with slight modifications or no modifications in the neighboring African countries. All we need to do is new voice recordings the animations that we showed you an example of are universal, so they can be used anywhere in the world with only the language alterations. But the local videos, when taken, for example, to Asia or other places in the world, need to be remade so that we can use the local people and have the local context, especially with the local food and culture. And we also want to do some field testing for the application because that has not been done yet. And what is required for making this happen is first, when we go into a country, we need to build in-country awareness. We need to get the support from government and NGOs and UNICEF and whatever organizations are involved in that specific country. And also we need an ethical permission to start video filming. And after all of this is done, we need to film the material. And if some new animations are needed in that area, also draw those. 
and then do the translation of these videos and the voice recordings. And after that, we can do the editing and get feedback from the local population to make sure that the videos are culturally relevant and that the mothers approve of them and then make some slight modifications if needed. And then after that, they can be made into final versions that can be distributed to, for example, healthcare centers like we have found that is a good way in Kenya, but also why not to banks and buses or whatever local or public places that you would have film screens in. And in like in our in our research project, they can also be taken to even the most remote village with modern technology through tablet computers or mobile phones. That was about everything that we wanted to tell you now. So now we would like to hear your comments and whatever questions you might have. Uh, what do you think um, should donor organizations should invest more in behavior change communication in general? The behavior change is behind everything new you can learn. So so I would say that yes, media should take these type of inventions much more seriously. And also, for example, with these videos, the good thing is that you can simultaneously educate more mothers than one. The healthcare workers usually don't have time to individually give the advice to each mother and then they will be lacking. But with the, the videos, multiple mothers can view them at the same time. And our experience when we have done this small focus group field is that mothers are extremely interested just to see how other women are behaving. They have a lot of questions when you just start to look to show them videos. So we still have a strong feeling this is a very powerful way when we get this further. I have a question, and this is Stefan. I, I would like to know, um, have you been working, um, able to build on um, experiences of other organizations with such video training? And um, what, what, what was the experience there that you could incorporate into your project? We have actually not met so many people who have done this before. Some um, colleagues have been doing video education more in the field of agriculture and all of those experiences have been extremely positive and they also say that all the farmers are so interested in seeing the videos and even if it wouldn't be for education they just want to see something new so th this has a lot of potential i'm just wondering um what sort of training for the health workers you're including with this project because um, in addition to the education, they need to be able to help with the specific problem solving. So it's it's an interesting mix of the message delivery and also the interpersonal communication. And we know that community health workers, their own experience is not necessarily the optimal practices. And so I'm wondering what training and supports you're including um, for them. In, in the Nairobi slums, we have had sessions with the healthcare workers, educating them first before we start the intervention and making sure that they understand the importance. And then in, um, in the rural, rural areas, we have not quite come to a conclusion with Kenyatta University yet if it should be their students who go monthly to show the videos, or if we should straight go to the health of health extension workers. But surely those also need to be educated, because one of the messages that we got from the mothers in Kenya was that they don't really know what to do because each nurse or health extension worker is giving them a different story and giving them different advice and this is also why we wanted to do the video so that they can get a more uniform information base and something to rely on but yes that is something that we still need to uh, in more okay. depth Absolutely. discuss with the yeah. students and professors at Kenyatta. Yeah I also wonder because um, Stefan just um, 
said something about um, the education agriculture and I know that they also use SMS service. It's more and more used in uh, developing um, aid. Um, I wonder if that is something you have also foreseen in the future, for example. Well, actually, <laughs> we are of um, a little bit of the opposite here because we have seen a lot of research on the SMS services and that is quite widely used also in Kenya. And, uh, and that is very good, but the videos we feel take it a step further because with these we can explain in more depth how to do things and not just that now would be a good time to feed or now would be a good time for a health checkup. But we can we can actually show the mothers how. You need not to read the text. You can be illiterate when you just look the videos. But that's yes. our main point was started. Mm -hmm. I guess it's really important to make sure that messages are coherent and coordinated. I mean, organizations or research institutes, they are preaching all for the same hymn book. That, that could be a struggle as well. Do you have any experience with that? Well, we have based all of our videos on WHO guidelines. And we have found that especially, well, now our experiences from Kenya mostly, but also somewhat from India, is that the country codes and uh, implementation plans are very strictly based on those same WHO guidelines and UNICEF working in the field in Kenya also got their guidelines on those same ones. So we have actually not have had any problems with that. For the previous question, in a way, about messages and, and what people want to read, uh, from Kenya, this experience again, that people, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of everywhere. But we don't want to read, we want to work. That, that is also a very comment for us because they said, why don't you bring these videos to us quickly? So we want to, to look at them. Mm -hmm. So this is something we, we like to hear, of course. Uh, I'm just wondering if you've actually tested at all yet um, in the field or if that's what the research is. I'm, what I'm wondering about is um, in the demo that you showed us, there's a fairly scientific sort of picture of the si stomach of the baby, and I'm wondering if that sort of level of images will be understood by people who haven't had uh, an, an advanced education, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you've looked at that already. We have only done some small pre-testing in Nairobi, and in those kind of focus group discussions, the mothers understood very well and had some very, very good questions about yeah. those and why water should be given and, and things like this. But we are only now starting the actual intervention. And that is why we wanted to do the division between Nairobi and the rural areas because we have a little bit of a hypothesis that maybe in the rural areas we need to make the videos even more simple because of the level of education there.